Hey guys, just got a new piece of golf technology from the guys over at Hack Motion Golf. This thing is becoming very popular in the golf industry. If you haven't heard of it, check them out. They're all over social media as well as their website, Hack Motion Golf. So ultimately what this is, is it is a sensor that connects on your wrist, almost like wearing a wristwatch, and then there's one that goes on the glove, and it gives you feedback as to everything that's going on with that lead wrist throughout a golf swing, a pitch shot, or a putting stroke. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go through um, and show you exactly what comes in this box, as well as how to set it up, how to calibrate it, how to download the software, how to use it a little bit, as well as a game like training, how we believe you should train with it to make it an effective tool to help you learn and change your golf swing. When you open up your Hack Motion case, you're gonna get a couple things in there that are gonna really help you get started. The easiest one or the first one, you get the quick start guide. And this really just lays out the basic fundamentals of how to use this new product you just received. It talks about the difference between the wrist sensor and the hand sensor, as well as the two different ways you can attach, the, attach that hand sensor. You can either use a strap or they have a glove attachment as well. So in this quick start guide, it walks you through the difference between the two, as well as how to install the strap for the hand sensor or the glove attachment for the hand sensor. It also talks about how to turn it on, how to charge it, how long it stays charged for, and also how to download the software. And there's really two ways you can do it. Either you can use an iOS device that's 11 or later, or a Windows device that is operating on the 10 system or later. Make sure if you are using a PC that you do have Bluetooth capability with it, otherwise you won't be able to connect the sensor because it is connecting via Bluetooth. On the back of it, it gives you a little bit more information as to how to calibrate the differences on the layout of the software. Ultimately, everything to help get you started so that you can start capturing swings, chips, or putts. We put on the hack motion. I'm using the glove attachment here, as you can see, and we've already downloaded the software onto our iPad, so let's go ahead and open it up. I've turned on the product. There's a little button on the top. I just push that. When the light turns on, open up the Hack Motion software, and it's going to ask me if I want to create an account for customer support. I'm going to skip that for now. And it automatically connected, which is pretty cool. So that's really nice and easy. And then you notice a couple different options on this uh, main screen. I can either train in full swing putting, or I can look at data that I've previously captured. Um, or they also have PGA Tour player data in there if you're trying to compare and, and understand what it is that these pros, I think they have PGA Tour and they have European Tour, um, you can compare to what these pros are actually doing when it comes to these uh, different things in the wrist. So let's go ahead and go to full swing. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to capture some shots, we're going to look at the data, and then we'll come back and we'll talk a little bit more about it. So the first thing that that we need to do is we need to make sure that we start the session. You can put a title there. This is just going to be golf at one. I hit start. And then it's going to start giving me real time data as to what's going on um, in both a flexion, extension, ulnar, and radial deviation. So, again, just to see that from camera view, this is going to be flexion. This is extension of the wrist. And we also have ulnar radiation or ulnar deviation and radial deviation as well. And so we have to calibrate that position. So the calibration process is pretty simple. This is something that I would be careful with because to me, this is where the most error could occur. If you're not doing this correctly, then the data you get out is gonna to be totally thrown off. So however you're doing it, make sure you're just doing it consistently um, more than anything so that over time, you're still gonna get representative data as to what the player is doing. So the first step it says is I need to have my wrist. It says place wrist flat, horizontal to the ground. So that feels about horizontal to the ground. Um, I also want to make sure that I don't have any radio or owner really going on. It's a pretty neutral spot. Wrist is flat to the ground. It's in position and it asks me to extend my palm upwards. Cool, so that calibration is done. So I am good to go. So it's saying that this position right about here is basically neutral. So I'm going to go ahead and hit a few shots and it should just capture these. game like training we're big on understanding 
how to make swing changes stick. And we know that in order to do that, you have to have spacing, variability, and challenge because we have to create cognitive stress. Cognitive stress is what leads to learning. So I love feedback. I'm a big fan of feedback. I'm a big fan of biofeedback, but I'm also even more a fan of when you are applying this feedback and how frequently this feedback is being given. So they give a couple different ways to do it. And this is just my opinion on how you could use it. There's immediate feedback, which I think is great if you're helping a student conceptualize what it is they need to do. Let's say you're doing something at the top of the swing, right? This is probably the most common one. You get somebody who is too cupped at the top of the swing, so you want them to get this a little bit flatter. So you can set a range. Um, so let's go flexion, extension, and we're gonna go zero to 15. We're gonna turn that on. And so if I go to the top, so this would be 70 degrees right there. So if I go and I get this into the correct range, I'm gonna get this very mesmerizing sound here. Sounds like angels, right? So, so that's a great way to help a student conceptualize what it is that you want them to do immediately, right? So that's the real time. So that's the real time feedback that it can give, which I think is great for that conceptualizing phase of what you're asking them to do, whether it's an address, top of the screen, or impact, whatever the case might be. Um, you can set that for flexion extension as well, ulnar and radial. And then you can actually do after the shot. And you can choose what position you want this to, to be making a sound or giving feedback on. Whether it's address, top of the swing, or impact, you choose the minimum range and the maximum range. I know there's a ton of video on Instagram and YouTube uh, that the guys at Hack Motion have done where they explain and give you more information on kind of what ranges you should be looking for to get players into. So I'm not going to go into that too much. Um, but that would be my feedback on the biofeedback portion. Use it, but use it wisely. Make sure that you are using it as a uh, comparator. So when the student has a feel, right, you might use the real time for the instant feedback, the immediate feedback, as they call it. You might use that to conceptualize the movement. Let's say you're doing top of the swing. And then over time, they're like, okay, I think I got it. Well, let's test you. Let's go ahead and do after shot, top of the swing. We're going to see if you can hit that position we want. So now they make their swing and they have to now communicate to you, yeah, I think I was within that range. And then the device, the software is going to tell you whether or not they were within that window or not. So now the player is starting to couple what they think they're doing with what they're actually doing. Cool. So we just hit seven shots there. Um, and this is really one of the first times I've looked at the layout of it. And to me, it's actually very simple how they display it. There's a lot of different ways you can view it. They have, the, you can look at it in the tiles view, in the table view, and the table view is going to show you all seven of them, and it gives you the average at the bottom. The chart is going to show you the actual graph and the 3D view as well. I'm looking at it in the tile um, and the graph view. That makes the most sense to me. And so in the tile view, on the top, we kind of have the real-time data. So as I'm, as I'm currently talking to you and moving my wrist around, those numbers are changing. And then we also get flexion extension from address. Um, what it was at address, what it was at the top of the swing, what it was at impact um, from flexion extension as well as ulnar and radial deviation from address top impact. And then they just added this, this feature, I think about last week it was, how much rotation, the degrees per second um, that you're starting to get that rotation from, it says estimate P6 to impact and then impact to estimated P8 and then impact rotation speed. Um, so that's right at impact, so that's the degrees per second that's occurring, kind of the rotational uh, difference between the, um, the wrist and forearm there uh, at impact. And it also gives you timing, backswing, so tempo, backswing time, downswing time, and then the ratio of those two. So this data to most people won't mean a whole lot unless you've seen tour data or you've seen research and studies done on this. So one of my favorite things that they've done, and I just worked this out, is you can go to benchmark, you can click on tour data, and you can actually compare what a tour pro has done. So let's go to European Tour Player 1, Ed Iron. Um, we're going to go ahead and look at that, and we can compare it. And what you'll see is the dashed lines are showing what they did, the solid lines are showing what I did. So we can get rid of some of these, and we can really look at it and see, okay, cool, I'm not that far off from what a you know European Tour Pro is doing in any of these categories, which is pretty nice because like I said before, the data without having compared to anything doesn't really mean a whole lot to most people. So that is a nice feature that they've added. So whether you're a coach um, or you're a player who's just got this device, you can actually compare what you are doing 
to what some of the best players in the world are doing. So I love that feature about it. That's in the benchmarks. I can turn that off. Outside of that, continue to mess around with it. I really like it so far. Um, the only questions I would have is making sure, not really questions, but the only concerns I would have is make sure that you're consistent in the calibration process. You know, like I said, the, the, the quality of the data coming out is only going to be good or as good as the data that's being put in. So if the calibration is different every time, you're always going to get different data coming out. So make sure that you're calibrating it consistently. Um, and then also just be mindful, make sure that the player doesn't have a glove that's too big. If the glove is too big, this might be moving around too much, which is going to change the data. I can sit here and leave my hand still and kind of twist this around and because the numbers are going to start to change. So make sure that if the glove fits the player or use the strap. Um, that's a great way to get around the glove issue. Um, outside of that, I think it's a good device. I think a lot of players are going to, be, are going to benefit from it if they know what the data is telling them. So make sure that you do your research, make sure that you follow the guys at Hackmotion. They're going to be putting out a ton of content they already have, and I know they will continue to do so on this information to help players and coaches better understand what is actually happening with this lead risk, whether it's in putting or full swing. This device measures it all, and it's going to help you improve your golf game.